we were put under the a car, use plywood to cover, and crates of drinks were placed on top of us. Crossing to Saba to Tripoli, that was the capital, I was sold twice. When you hear slavery, slavery in Libya, I was sold twice. You will not cross from Libya to Italy by land. It's by the, the Blue Sea, what they call the Mediterranean Sea. That was where I came face to face with death. Our boat had a puncture from under. And that was where we thought it was all over. I've already said my last prayer. There's some prayers you say to a dead person. I had said it to myself. But my friends who left two days before we left, I lost two of them. Ooh. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tochi. You guys are welcome. Today's video is a very interesting one because I have a special guest in our midst today and he's here to share his story of how he moved from Nigeria to Europe by land. Yes, he went to Europe by road and it's a very emotional one. You guys, you don't want to miss this story because when I watched it, I was like, no, I have to bring him here to come and share his journey, his experience so that somebody would know like things people go through just to get better lives for themselves, things people go through that you don't even know about. A lot of people went through this journey as well, but I'm glad that he's bold enough to come here and share his story for everyone to learn one or two from it and just know things people are going through. So I would let him introduce himself. He's a very good friend of mine. And then we'll dive right into the video. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on your time. My name is Emmanuel and uh, my channel name is Cos Reps Connor. Like you heard from the host, we are like we are friends. And uh, I was really happy when she told me, would you mind sharing this story in my platform? I told her, why not? You're my family. I can do that for you anytime, any day. So we are very pleased to have you guys with us. Thank you so much for always turning in and always coming around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Kostrep. So please, can you tell us how this whole thing started for you when you decided that it was time for you to leave Nigeria, what your condition in Nigeria was, and then why you decided to just take this, this step without being afraid or just tell us how it all started. The story is in an expanse of four months, but due to the video that we are doing right now, I'm going to try and make it a summary of about 20 to 25 minutes but i'm going to be, be very very specific okay and uh, when i graduated from the university that was in 2012 i entered 28 i finished 2012 and uh, it was time for service i was sent to sokoto to do my nyc and during the nyc process i started putting in for various jobs and various uh, positions i didn't get but Luckily, a month to the end of my my service, I got a teaching job in one of the private schools in Sokoto, and then my salary was twenty two thousand five hundred. I was expected to take two subjects: chemistry or physics, chemistry and mathematics, or maths and physics, or maths and chemistry. I choose chemistry and geography because I read by chemistry in the university. In the university, so that aside, so when we finish the service, it was twenty two thousand five hundred. The money wasn't okay for me. I had to resign for the first job. I relocated to where I used to be, as in my base. That was Benin City of those states. And when I got there, I started putting in for different um, uh, jobs. And got so kind, I got a job in one of the microfinance bank in my in my state, Anambra. So I left an, uh, been, uh, those states and moved to Anambra, where I was working as a savings account officer in one of the microfinance bank in my state. But while I was still in the job, I noticed that the salary was still very meager. 30,000 naira and uh, plus wages, plus commission, everything. I wasn't comfortable. I was there and they told me that in six months, they are going to at least renew my enumeration to see if I could get a permanent placement, which can make my uh, salary go up a little, a little. But unfortunately, it's delayed. And then the thoughts started coming in. Is it what I'm going to do to get married? I'm going to do to fend for myself? I have siblings, I have parents, I have to take care of. So I waited up to 10 months. The letter did not come. The consideration did not come. So I told them, I have to go. As God will have it, I got a job with a pharmaceutical company, same Anambra, but this time I was living in Iala and relocating to Oka. But because it's a pharmaceutical company, 
I have to relocate from Oka to their branch or to any place I want to. So I choose Abia State, Aba to be precise. When we got there, the same thing, the same price tag, 30,000 naira. I was like, what is going on? After spending that many years in the university, reading by chemistry, drawing structures, we, we have to look at ceilings. And me now, I was the class rep. That's what you're seeing, course rep. I was the course rep of my level. And me, I used, they used to give me a special seat in front. After doing all those things, I will now come here and be paid 30,000 in a month. And it was the interest. And you have to pay rent because you relocated, right? Yes. Yes. I had to pay rent. And all that. Yes. I had to feed. Family was at home in Benin waiting for a little stipend every month from how much? So, is it what I'm going to do? God so kind. People in Abba liked me and liked what I was doing. And that was what I was getting because the commission that comes in is your own personal money. But along the line, I worked there for January and February. I told myself, I can't do this. And that was how the, the intention came in and said, ah, can we leave this country for good? He started coming in. And in, in February ending, I told them I wasn't working again. So I resigned, which means I resigned three jobs in an expanse of one year. That was when the interest started coming in. And a friend told me that, uh, can you go? I said, go where? He said, Europe. I said, why not? I love to go. I want to help myself and my family. He said, but it's not to the normal route. I said, what is this? I don't understand. He said, it's true. Continue, life. guys. This video is brought to you in partnership with Lemonade Finance. It's an app that me and many of my friends and family regularly use to send money to Africa. As many of you may already know, Lemonade Finance allows Africans in the UK, in Canada, and in the US to send money to 10 African countries. So you can send money to Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Benin, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda at zero fees. There are no transaction charges at all, and the recipient receives the money instantly. Guys, they have the best rates that you can find in the market, so you would always get your complete value for money. I've been using Lemonade Finance for a while now, and I can guarantee you that it's very fast, easy to use, and completely free when it comes to sending money back home. So my people in the US, you guys, remember I told you that when Lemonade Finance launches in the US, I'll be the first to let you know. So Lemonade Finance is now available in the US, so you can send money from the US to any of these African countries that I just mentioned. You can download the app with my referral link in the description box to get 10% cash back on your first transactions above 100 pounds. You can also type in my code TOCHI if you've downloaded the app directly from the app store. That way you get 10% cash back on your first transactions above 100 pounds. So if you send 100 pounds, you get 10 pounds back. If you send 200 pounds, you get 20 pounds back and so on capped at 50 pounds. How exciting is this news guys? So hurry now, download Lemonade Finance app and begin to send money to Africa for free. And don't forget to use my code TOCHI. All right guys, back to the video. He said, but it's not to the normal route. I said, what is, this? I don't understand. He said, it's true land. Hey, at that point, I there was this code that came in and uh, he told me that it's not something that can, I, I should be afraid of that many persons in Europe today came in by that means. And I told him, if people can enter, I want to venture into it. So I left home finally on the first, I think first week of March, 2015. And that, will, that was how my struggle began. Yeah. It was, yes. So it was, it was hell. I had to move back from Aba to Bini because we had to move from Bini that very year. Uh, we have it's a place they call Aduawa in Benin, where you have buses going to the north. We had to move from Kanu, and Kanu is a part, uh, is a, is a northern state in Nigeria. So we moved to Kanu on a on a uh, this um, uh, 18 seater bus, and that was how we got to Kanu. When we got to Kanu, we thought it was just when you get to Kanu, it's just a bus, it was still difficult. From Kanu, we took another bus to Niger Republic. On getting to Niger Republic. We had to get to Sorry, where they like call. How many people were this? How many were you? Yes. For me, as I said, we were up to 18. My In set. the bus? In the bus. And this particular bus is a bus that contains 10 persons because it's a this small taxi. It's a bus, this small taxi, this small bus, like not the normal 18 seater bus this like time. The 14 seater bus. This one is 10 seater bus. This is this smaller one. But we were 18 inside. 
we were 18 because it was already we already didn't left nigeria at that time we were already in niger and things have changed if you were to be in nigeria we would have said no because it's eight, we need 80 staff that we can sit comfortably but the last mm -hmm. time till i got to europe when i sat comfortably in a bus was when i left from Benin to Cannes. till i got to europe it was hell all through so when we got to niger we had to stop also in Agadez. There are different places to stop, Gatron, as the case may be. But the final bus stop you have to get to is Libya. So now, how do you get to Libya from Niger? That was another problem. They brought this 14-seater bus, and we were about 28 to be put in that bus. Which means in that back seat that normally have four persons sitting, we were six persons sitting there, and six of us had somebody on our lap can imagine that that kind of uh, treatment so that was how we we moved and got so kind we got to libya all these things from benin to libya took me nothing less than three months so if as i'm saying it now it might look as a summary but i i myself i don't want to cry i am trying to jump some things that will make me cry because i've cried enough okay so, so how are you it, coping that period did you live with money how are you eating how like yeah. where were you guys where did you guys leave accommodation yeah. we, we, yes it it it's not like where we lived was just like a camp where we have other persons who bring people and drop and somebody take it's just like a, a connect they bring you here when you get here you have to wait for a day or two you enter the next bus going to the next direction it's just like pick and drop but there's, yeah. there's there, it's like a a, would I call it a connect? Let me use that word. There was this conglomerate. Let me use the word because it was not one person. They were a group of friends, group of persons who were syndicate to this. You understand? Yeah, it's like, yeah. you give me, let me continue from here. Okay, you take, you continue from there. That was how it is. So they, pro they provided like food. Doing, doing and we paid now. Nah. It wasn't free. It wasn't free. The money we paid covered everything. At least oh. as I then, I was able, my, all my savings went for it. I think I spent nothing less than about 450,000 naira then. That was all my savings I had coming from the school to the bank and working in a pharmaceutical company. So it was all my savings I spent. So I, the, the money was, we well, had already paid. So feeding okay. was on their care. Transport okay. on them. Everything was on them. Yeah, so you just because they already pay. paid for it. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. But we never, we, we were not told that we would be packed like sardine. We were not told. We were, we, nobody told us that you will be congested to in a bus or under the boot. We at a point we slept under the boot, in a oh. boot of a car. This Camry car. We were eight or be six inside. I can't forget. I'm not. I've not said it because I'm trying to cut time. These are things that happen stage by stage. Because as you come from this place, you need to get to this place. And as yeah. you are going, you don't have your papers. You have to be shocking. At a point, we were put under the a car. Use plywood to cover and crates of drinks were placed on top of us at a point oh our neck was like this at that point because you have to balance the wood as they are putting drinks on top of you now these are things i have not mentioned because it's oh. all inside the journey you, you understand so that is just how it is so eventually as god will have it minus the people we saw who fell from the illos what you what we use in the deck side is illos People, some persons fell down from the illness, and once you fall, you are on your own. You are left. You are left alone. Yes. Ooh, they won't once stop for you or anything. It, nobody is stopping for you. Once you fall, you are on your own. And what oh is holding you from falling is a wood. A wood they cut for us to hold ourselves. If that wood eventually breaks and you go down, alagali, it's your own cup of tea. So that's how it is. Minus the cars we saw on the road, Donkeys, we saw that we already gone. That they were rotting people's foot uh, prints. You can see footprints, but the people you will not see. You will see footprints, fresh footprints, but the people you will not see. The next thing you will see is a place that sand has covered something. You can see somebody's shoes like that outside. You will not see the person. Maybe sand has covered, but you will see the shoe. The shoe is just waiting like this. Somebody's leg is why right, the shoe is like that. We saw things. It's it's really traumatizing and it, it really affected us most people as in we are crying while we are going. We are crying when we are seeing things. Sorry. This is not, yeah. Sorry, did you travel alone from Nigeria? Did you travel with anybody from Nigeria? That's did what I'm saying. Friends? We we were we were a team. I said it before, I have mentioned it. We were a team as in, in group. We left in group 
and that that is the combination of two friends two friends two friends who are their who are our boss brought us together so totally we were 18 based on our calculation if i can remember as i then that was many years ago some years ago so we are 18. Uh, so when we got to libya it became another problem as i then uh, gaddafi was just recently murdered and the area was not safe for everybody so we, as i then in libya you could at, at 10 years you could have your gun your own gun it was risky and we t- it wasn't easy for us but god so kind we needed to wash cars to to help ourselves to see what we could feed because as at then they will tell you that the money you paid expires in libya that you have to take off yourself in libya so what they will do is to put you in where they wash cars this car wash i don't know if you have seen people washing cars with machine yes we, that was where i learned it they'll take you to car wash where you can uh, do the work at least get some money to eat if you don't go to car wash i'm sorry you might be able, you might die of hunger and if you die it's only for us who know you to cry for you and the journey continues we can't stay with you your body will be thrown away as normal there's nothing like it. we saw things many things happen at a point self at a point even from me from we now we are, we are in libya a place called saba from crossing to saba to tripoli that was the capital i was sold twice when you hear slavery slavery in libya i was sold twice yes so that's just yes i was so twice because at a point I, now i'm not mentioning what our sisters went through I, oh, i'm not mentioning them too. Oh yeah God. ladies were there now I, i'm not mentioning what ladies went because I, I i we saw i can't talk about it i'm not a lady i'm a guy i'm talking as a guy so i you can imagine what you see of our ladies going through but we, you know it's just about me and uh, so not about them but if you can imagine what i went through Compare it to what the females will go through. Many things really happened. And we thank God what that's I'm here today. But before I got here, and I'm trying to come around, it wasn't easy. Like I said, it was very uh, traumatic. I was sold the first time to a man who has a farm that we eat once a day. We don't eat in the morning. We go to work, come back around three o'clock. We eat by four, go to work again, come back by eight or by seven, and we sleep. We eat just once a day. What is this food? Spaghetti, macaroni, and bread. Uh, if you talk more, they beat you. You will still walk with those injuries. With every body pain, you will still walk. And uh, when he finished with us, he, he, his friend came to visit him and saw us. And the friend told him, please, I want to buy this food from your hand. Then he sold us. That was when we, we, we entered the second job, which was a uh, missing bricklayer. People that normally miss a carry block. Yes, I was used as the first slave for a farmer. And then as a bricklayer to carry block to miss cement. So that's just it. So eventually it all got to the time that we were supposed to cross from that um, Tripoli to the seaside. You know, it's Saba. Saba is like a place in Libya. From Saba, you need to cross to the capital, which is Tripoli. From Tripoli, you need to cross to a place which is Musrata, which is close to the sea. And that was where I told you we were lying down in the in the in the van. They put plywood on us and they arrange crates of drinks on top of us. You have to bear. But because if we, if we don't have papers, we, they have to shock uh, us in those places for us to get to the seaside. On getting to the to, close to the seaside, our vehicle broke down and we all asked to calm down. Then that was when they now shocking all of us, eight of us, into the boot of a Camry 202 that time. So that was how we got to the seaside. So if yeah. I heard you correctly, you even were 18, but now only eight were left. Yeah, you know, as 18, it's both male and female. As So at a point, they were about to sell us. The female, we are, we are not sold because they were female. So I don't know how the, how the bosses did it. The female, we are saved. It was only the guys who were about uh, eight, I mean nine, in, out of, I think about eight, that we are sold. The females were already fine. They were taken to the to the um, bus to the cartel. Uh, they call it cartel. They were taken to the cartel's uh, um, uh, boss's house, and they were all living fine. But for we the guys, we were sold because at the end the, we heard that the the, the uh, boss could not pay his complete fee, and so people like us who were, who were not informed, we are going to work for the money that our boss refused to pay. So we are now sold as the price. 
to complete the money that our boss did not pay. So that was why we were sold. Eventually, we got to the, to, to, like I said, our boss broke down on the road and we all moved out of the uh, van and we all plus, uh, placed 7788 inside the boot of a Camry 202. Different Camry just entered and that was how we got to the seaside. Now, the most, the most terrific thing is when you get, when you come by land, you will not cross from Libya to Italy by land. It's by the, the Blue Sea, what they call the Mediterranean Sea. That was where I, I, that was where I came face to face with death, as God will have it, but uh, God said it wasn't my time. So when we got to the seaside, oh and behold, we thought it was a normal boat, this normal speed boat. But you will not believe what I saw. What we saw was a boat constructed with tarpaulin. You know they call tarpaulin? This um, uh, material, the material they use in doing canopy for weddings, for burials. That material they use in doing canopy. That was what they constructed for us as a canoe or as a boat to cross from Libya to Italy. And because they felt they feel that yes, it's our own risk, they told us not to worry. It is fine. It is just 10 hours and we'll be we'll be close to Italy. But I tell you, we were there for almost uh, I think 32 hours before we eventually uh, uh, rescued. But before then, our boat, because the material was very light and we were top, we were on top of, of, of the sea. Like you know, the blue sea is salty, in case you don't know. When you hear blue sea, it is really blue in color. When you carry the water, you will see it, it is blue. And when you test it, it is salty. You can't drink it. You can't use it to bath. You can't use it to do anything. If not, your body will be peeled. So because of the long time it has stayed in the sea, our, tap, our boat had a puncture from under. And that was where we thought it was all over. We started packing because there was no hope. At a point, we stopped packing. But five minutes to stop packing got so kind. I'd already said my last prayer. I don't know if I've said it before. Yes, I'd said my last prayer as a Catholic. I, I was with the priest. So there's, there's some prayers you say to a dead person. I had said it to myself. I had commended my soul to God because the boat was already leaking from under. And everywhere was... The, uh, the water was already emptying. And it was already in my ankle. Even with my shoe. Water, was, water has crossed my ankle. And then we had said we it was all gone. And we were still packing water, but some probably told us, leave it, let us just go. We cannot meet you. We cannot be packing water for many hours. Let's just go. After we had lost all hope, that was when we saw the rescue in front who spoke in Italian and told because somebody was there that normally that understand Italy. He told us that they are coming, that they, he, he, we can hear they they owned and told us we are coming. Take your time, don't rush, be stay, be, be steadfast, just keep yourself in peace we are coming that was what the man told us then that was when the zeal came back again to start uh, packing out water and by god's grace that see me here uh, we didn't lose anybody but my friends who left two days before we left i lost two of them i think it was they were about two, two they were about 220 something that left only 14 survived the balance went down so i i'm so grateful to god that uh, i am here like I said, it's, it's, some, it's a story that normally makes me cry. It's a story that normally makes me feel bad. But uh, I thank God. Such an emotional story, Koshrep. Thank you for the yeah. courage, you know, to share this yeah. story. Wow. Oh. Whew. That was a hard one. What an experience you had. But I, I'm, I'm really glad that you're doing fine right now. So how do you feel right now? Looking back, how do you feel leaving Nigeria, where you are right now? How are you doing? Do you regret your actions or, you know, generally, how are you doing? And what advice do you have for anybody out there that wants to um, do the same thing? Yes, um, sorry, I'm 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 crying a little because it's something Fine. I don't like talking about. But uh, right. I don't want this video to be a crying girl, so I'm really yeah. holding myself, um, so I won't join you uh, to cry. Yes, I'm I'm sorry, you don't have to join me. It's and uh, we 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 uh, I will thank God because uh, at least I can I can boast of supporting my parents back home. At least I have this uh, confidence. I have this rest of mind. Though it's not easy because uh, you still need to have some documents to be free at a point. But uh, 
we thank God, it's not like Africa as a whole, uh, you are secured, you have a good hospital care, you have electricity, as you can see, you have good water, you have, you have to go to school again, you have good roads, everybody is friendly. But uh, for those persons who wish to come, please, I beg you, I beg you, if you want to come, look for a visa. If possible, look for a scholarship. If possible, go beg your uncle. So guys, I think um, we're going to end this video here because as you can see, it's, it's really emotional. So you've heard from the horse's mouth. He doesn't wish what he went through for anybody. So if you want to travel abroad, please do it legally, okay? Go through the right way, please. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. The full story, the details, everything is on Kosrep's channel and his channel name is Kosrep's Corner. Please do well to go to his channel, show him support, subscribe to his channel guys and you can watch the full story, okay? You can watch the full story there. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye.